ladies and gents, hope you're well, hope you've had a good week so far. Um, so first of all, apologies for the background. Again, I'm on a night shift, having to do the eye graph before Christmas, guys. Um, so that's just the way that it is. So I'm going to do this video instead of going to the preview tomorrow that Luke and Craig are going to be doing for the Stoke City game. So I thought I'd do my own video and it's going to be posted up, um, including that. So hope you enjoy this video, guys. So after last week's um, draw against Bristol City, we're hoping results will go our way. Middlesbrough lost against Derby, which was a good thing. And Stoke lost in the Monday night game 2-0 against West Brom. They sacked their manager Nathan Jones. They could have a new manager in by the weekend. So it's two teams at the minute that have no managers. So our search for a manager goes on. Um, Adam Murray, I felt, did a good thing on uh, Friday against Bristol City. Made two changes. Um, we're about 15 minutes left. Schmidt, Simoes. And Thomas, they all came on, they all made impacts. I'd love to see Thomas start on uh, Saturday, but we'll get to that later on. So first of all, there's been some developments this week within Barnsley. There's been reports that we've been after a German manager called Jens Keller, or head coach, uh, not a manager. Um, Jens Keller, he's coached the likes of Schalke, Ingolstadt, Union Berlin. Um, the, sorry about that, that's just where I'm at work. The most... Um, Worrying thing for me is is his win ratio it doesn't really um, get me going. I know we haven't heard of Daniel Stendel before, and Keller is obviously an unknown. I have actually heard of Keller before when he was manager of Schalke. When Schalke used to be well, they are a big German side, but when they used to be in the Champions League quite a lot every year, I can remember Keller being hold of that. So he's he has been in charge of big clubs, but his ratio and his records at these big clubs isn't that great. Um, there's reports coming from Germany that we have actually approached him and obviously um, Andy Giddens who works at Radio, Radio Sheffield he does get a lot of these rumours right when he does make reports about Barnsley um, that we have approached him so I assume there is one of a number of candidates um, I assume that Adam Murray is in that frame um, Poyarash Baggy who we spoke about last week from Gothenburg he's apparently turned the job down I don't know if that's... Um, his agent just trying to get Ash Baggy more media coverage or not, I don't know. But to be honest with you, I'm glad we're not going down that route with all respect to Ash Baggy. Um, Swedish football and in the English Championship, even though it's second division championship football, is it's one of the most competitive leagues in the world. Um, and I think, you know, we'd be making a bit of a massive gamble if we were to bring him in. He's still very young, he's still in his mid 30s. I know Stender were a young coach, but I even feel that that were a more of a safe choice than Ash Baggy was coaching Gothenburg, who was seventh in the league. He's done well with small funds, apparently, according to some journalists over in Sweden. But for me, he was never my first choice. He never got me going. Like I said, I feel there's 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 um there's candidates out there that could come in and do a job for us. Um, but I don't think we'll go down that route. Um, I don't know who, who I'd go for. I think personally, I'd like to see Murray being given a bit more time. I think he's done well with with the squad that he's got. Is I, I get it, he's not he's not like a like I said, he's not the most inspiring appointment. But at the end of the day, if he's working well with the players, it's clear to see that the players are um reacting to him. Yes, the performance at Uddersfield wasn't good enough, but that isn't due to Murray, that's due to the players um not being at the standard required. The the players just didn't turn up that game. It was nothing to do with Murray. Um I question some of the subs and some of the starting players against Huddersfield um, but then again he's going to get it right, he's going to get it wrong sometimes as all coaches do, they do make choices that are sometimes correct and some that are wrong so looking at that, I would give Murray maybe a few more a few more games, see if he can get some wins together there's some very winnable games in November going into early December, hopefully now this can be the start of something good looking at the results that we got against Bristol City, top six side, West Brom, saw them on Monday night, they didn't play well, but the, the top of the league for a reason, they're a good championship team, and we we were close to getting an away win at their ground, Swansea, very good side under Steve Cooper, so we've got three draws recently against teams that arguably will be in the playoff picture at the end of the season, so if we can do this against teams that are around us in the table, that will be the results that define where we finish at the end of the season, I said this to Luke, on the fan cams after Leeds United where we lost 2-0. Yeah, I were disappointed that we lost 2-0 because it's a local derby and I didn't feel we like, I feel that result flattered them and the scoreline flattered them. But the performance against the top end championship side was there. If only we played them teams every week, we might be up, up in the air of the air so It's always been the same with Barnes, even when I was younger. We used to have big teams come down to us, Man City, Newcastle, Birmingham, when they used to be a bigger side. Um, you know, big teams used to come down here expected to roll us over and we'd always 
give it 15-20% more because there's not for us to lose. We're expected to lose and we've got more chance for us to express ourselves. I think when we're playing teams that are similar ability to us or where we are in the league, we seem to maybe go into a shell a bit and get a bit tense. Um, but we can't be doing that this Saturday. So we'll look at the off-field issues and then we'll go into Stoke. Um, we'll preview that. Um, so first of all, there's been a, a meeting tonight at Oakwell, um, the chief exec or whatever the, that's what he is in name, uh, whether he's that, I don't know, Dave Murphy. Um, he's, he's met members of the supporters clubs, so the supporters clubs that take the fans on the, 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 the supporters buses. So you've got your Courthouse Reds, you got Manx, you got uh, East Dean, you'll have a few others, Ireland Reds, um, you got supported liaison officers, people that work in the community. Um, and I've, I've been looking at the comments. Um, it goes into some um, information regarding Stendhal's departure, which is really what I'm going to cover. I know it's old news, but it's also for people that are been not in the know. It does go into that a little bit. And then it also goes into transfers and departures. Uh, and also the policy and as uh, new signings a new manager so going to Stendhal's departure first so it looks like it's going to be a legal thing going on regarding the Joey Barton case they said that they're going to support Stendhal during that because obviously Stendhal was an employee at the time when this issue when Barton came and that's going to a full trial next year so Stendhal will have to come back to England if he's already not here coaching with some other club um, somebody asked Murphy would Stendhal be able to be employed by another club straight away the answer was more or less yes so he, he could be employed by another club but um, these are only what I'm putting out there um, it seems like it's going to a legal thing hence the shortness of the statement now Murphy has acknowledged that the relationship between the board and the and the members of the, the, the hierarchy or regime at the club and the fans have been damaged by that statement and the lack of transparency after that e.g. an apology or not being as open and I think there is going to be probably a legal reason behind that whether they've got lawyers that are involved that have not have said that they can't say much more or whether the dismissal itself has been um, questioned by Stendhal's representatives whether he's got agents his agent and lawyer involved and they've, they've questioned the manner of departure it doesn't look like the football reasons are the issue so it's, it's off the field issues there's several rumours flying around. I don't want to go into them in case then I don't want to be saying th this is the reason that he left and this is the reason the board sacked him. But that's what it seems like that's happening. So that is the first issue. Right, second of all, signings. So they're saying that they will be looking to bring in one or two players. That's what Murphy has said. They've said that before we brought in more. Um, I, I think personally, you know, there's still two months left of January. I feel we need, we need more than two players. I think we need to get rid of some of the deadwood first. Looking at the likes of Tiam, if Pinios isn't going to play, let's get somebody that's going to play at left back. Left back for me is a position that does need sorting out. We can't keep playing players out of position there. I know Cavari and Brown's done an half decent job in the last few games playing out of position, but I want out and out left backs playing there. I'd like to see Clark Oduwar being given a game, but it looks like that they're not going to give him a go. Maybe in the second half of the season, maybe in the last few months of the season, March to May, they might give him a few more games. He's been doing well in the under-23s with Devaney, so, you know, we bought him for a reason, let's play him. So, going back to signings, it looks like they're going to get one or two. In terms of the policy, um, it looks like they're going to stay with the policy. Um, it, it seems that people are commenting that they might be looking to tweak the structure if it's affordable, so whether we can afford the player. So, in bear in mind, we have got Dougal and Radlinger, who are 26, so I don't mind... The, the policy itself, and this is something I'm going to say, I've never minded the policy. It's when it's been just, when you're that stubborn and strict to it, I think you're, you're, you're shortcutting yourself. When you're in a corner and you can't get out of it, if you keep sticking to the same f f policy and philosophy that's clearly not working, then that's when you shoot yourself in the foot. When there's players that are available or were available before now, even on a loan or a free agent basis, um, I think that that's where a situation that we could have avoided and could have avoided from now up until um, where we are from the window to now. So that's that's what I'm going to say on that basis. In terms of departures, they said that there's going to be no release clauses involved. So basically a, a club can't trigger a release clause. But then it also says that if there is a bid that does come in that matches their fee, this is what I'm getting, that they will consider that that bid. Um, so as we know, January, it's never a good, a good time for Barnsley. 
um, in terms of letting his players go. We lost Pops last year. We've lost, obviously, the likes of Hurahan, Winnell and Bray before. We've lost the likes of Butterfield and Bogdanovic in, in January. Yeah, January. It's good It's good if you're a big club, but it's not good if you're a little club because, you know, um, and also if you're, doing, if, you're, if you're struggling, it's hard to bring players in. Um, they don't want to be involved in a relegation fight sometimes. Not a lot of players do anyway. Um, so it, it does seem to me, the way that it was worded, that do expect... If what Mowat and Woodrow were to go, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. I think it's imperative that we don't sell anyone that's in the first team, even in the in the in the eight team that we're playing. Especially the spine. You you're looking at likes of Dougal, shouldn't go. Brown shouldn't go. Woodrow and Mowat hundred percent shouldn't go. Even likes of Cavare shouldn't go. Um so they they are the, the five or six for me that need to stay, um, no matter what. The squad players, maybe some likes of Jordan Williams could go out on loan. Jordan Green could go out on loan. Styles, even though I like him as a player, I really rate him. He's doing well in the under-23s with game time under Devaney. He could be a candidate for a loan. Um, you're looking at some of the young lads that, you know, if they're not going to be playing in under-23s, get them, get them competitive football till the end of the season. It might make him in, in, into a better player in the long run. So that looks like the departures. They obviously, they want to look like they're not going to sell anybody but just expect just the way that it's been worded by the looks of things for it to go that way so that's it guys um they said that the the fan zone i'm not a big fan of it to be fair um they said that it's gone well it's a trial based period they're going to keep coming up with uh, players to be inducted into the hall of fame i know neil redfern's one of them players that has been inducted before so them types of players that have been club legends over the years that they're going to keep inducting and they're going to keep the fans being nominating this, that, and the other. Um, so that's it, guys. That's we all a lot of this information that Murphy's retorted tonight. It seems like it's been a prepared statement. Reading the statement, I don't want to keep getting on at the board because people think that this channel is a is a anti board channel. It's not. I say it. I say it personally as it is. I care about the club. I care about the way that the club's being run. Um, again, going back to comments from Friday. Somebody alluded that if that if anybody doesn't like the club board, it's because they're racist, because they're foreign. Now I've never heard of such bullshit in my life. Let me first make a first state this that I've got friends that I've been to school with, that I've been to college with, that are personal friends now, even family members that are not from this country. So my granddad was a Hungarian freedom fighter that fought against the Soviets in the 50s and fought against Nazi occupation in the 50s and he worked down the mines for 50 years and he was foreign and his family members that came over were foreign so don't nobody tell me that because I don't like the board that I'm racist how dare somebody say that and I'm, I'm not going to say who it is because they haven't got they have I can't even if I, if I see whoever they are and if they say it to me face good luck to you if you say it to me face because I can't even give you the time of day accusing me of being racist when I'm not, that to go that low because I don't like a fucking board of a football club, that is the most ridiculous comment I have ever heard. Nothing to do with where they're from. It's to do with the fucking business decisions. It's to do with the fact that I can see this club is not is not being run properly. It needs to be run properly. It needs to be taken care of. I spend up probably, if you're looking at it, due to ticket costs at home, home and away, and also travel costs, I spend around £1,000 a year. Probably more than that. That's just an average. So surely I have a say now the club's running if it's not been run properly. And I've been doing that for over 20 years. Easy. So don't you dare tell me that I'm a racist when I'm not. Right, so let's go back to Stoke. Right. Just give me a minute, I'll pause from this one. Right, Stoke. Going to be a tough game. This is a massive three points opportunity. We need to win this, as simple as that. We can't be drawing. It's getting to the stage now, we're five points off Luton. Luton lost at Forest, at home to Forest last week. Then Luton are gettable and Middlesbrough are gettable. Middlesbrough is another massive game. We've got the likes of Middlesbrough, Blackburn and Stoke coming up in the next few weeks. Blackburn got a good win at home against Sheffield Wednesday, but they haven't been in great form. But let's look at a game at a time. Stoke, they've got some very good players in the side. I watched the game against West Brom on Monday. Um, their, their players looked low on confidence the stadium wasn't full I know they've sold out the away allocation and fair play to Stoke well done for that lads so if you're Stoke fans well done keeping up the faith and the the loyalty 
even if in a bad situation like us, it's great to see, get behind the lads. Um, Stoke are a big club. They, they should still be, you know, they came down from the championship, they appointed Gary Rowett, I think it was, and then started last season, and then they went for Jones in January, we were doing great with Luton at the time, and Luton, I had a fit that remarkably got into the uh, into the championship with us, um, automatically after that by keeping in an interim manager, but, but Stoke, they've got players on big wages, it reminds me a little bit of Sunderland, a little bit, where they've got players on big wages, who are really finding the championship a tougher standard than they expected, whilst also being comfortable and sitting on 20, 30, 40 thousand pounds a week, I don't expect Joe Allen, Sam Vokes, um, Jack Butland, them sorts of players to be at Stoke for low wages. Um, they're going to be on big wages, which is why many clubs in the Premiership and top-end clubs in the Championship won't be looking to buy them players because they're already on massive wages. It reminds me a little bit of Sheffield Wednesday as well. Um, Wednesday doing well, obviously, in the last few months. But in terms of the, it's hard to get players off that wage bill when they're sitting on three or four year contracts on 30, 40 grand a week. They're sitting comfortably financially whilst also playing every week at a decent level. But Stoke now, it's a massive chance for us. We know that his own form needs to be the key whether we stay up this season or not. And we are in a relegation fight. Let's say it, we are. We're in November and we've, we're on nine points. If we can win this weekend, I don't know if we can go out of the relegation zone or not, but psychologically it would be massive um, to try and... We, we, we'd be four points ahead of Stoke. So even if, if even if we lost against Blackburn after the international break, we'd still have a point cushion if we lost that game and Stoke won the week after. So to get a bit of breathing space between us and Stoke is massive. And psychologically to get his first win of the season since Fulham on the opening day would be massive. And it would go into the international period again with a lot of impetus and momentum and confidence, most importantly for the young lads. Um, I think the starting team for me would be Collins in goal. I think he's done well, Collins still. I know Radlinger's come back, but he needs to work his way back into contention. Um, maybe around the Christmas period, um, I would start to maybe bring Radlinger in, maybe rotate if possible, um, with the amount of games that's going to be played in a short space of time. Um, full-backs, I would continue with Cavari at right-back. I would start Odawar at left back, and what I want to see a four four two or a four four one one this week. Um, I want Diaby and Halmer, and I want to see Clark Odawar at left back. Civic for me, you know. Look, let's say it as it is. I'm not his biggest fan. I'm not really gonna gonna sell him down the river because he's still a young lad. He's come from a lower end League One club, expected to start every week against Championship, Premiership sometimes quality opposition and expected to compete to the, to the same level as them. But I don't think he's ready, um, if I'm being brutally honest. I think so. he needs a rest. He's played nearly every game this season. And we, even when he's been making mistakes, we still keep playing him. And I know he wasn't at fault for that much last week, but that second goal, looking back at the highlights, that second goal was avoidable. And I think we need an out-and-out left-back. He struggles for me. He, he, he's a... He's a He's a massive weak link, and Mads Anderson is as well. I think both of them need to sit out. I think Odewar's a natural left back. I think he gives us a lot more um, shape and structure with Cavari down that left hand side. And I think Brown as well has done a great job playing out of position. And he didn't have a great game last week, but he's not a left back. He started his career as a forward, and then he's been made into a right winger, then a right wing back, then a left wing back. And it is good to see that he's versatile, but then again, at the same time, we need to play him in his proper positions, and that goes to the rest of the team. Whoever's coaching them, they need to play in the strongest positions. We can't be playing players out of position because then if they make mistakes, then it's because they're not used to the structure. No matter how much you train, it's different to a match experience. So Odoa for me at left back. Going into the midfield, left midfield, Luke Thomas deserves to start. I think he did really well against Bristol City when he came on. Brought a lot of intensity, urgency. I think again going forward, I think his confidence does need to improve in terms of one-on-one -on -one taking a defender on. And that's something that he does need to work on for me over time his effort you can't um, complain about that last week and I think he deserves to come in especially over Wilkes um, right hand side I'd play Brown in the midfield I'd play Dougal and Mowat and I'd have Chaplin behind Woodrow the subs would be McGeehan as your midfield option in, in the centre I'd have uh, Radlinger as your keeper option I'd have um, Schmidt on the bench Simoes um, Wilkes um Ben Williams, and if we had one more, I'd pick Anderson. <coughs> so that's my seven. I'm going for a 2-0 Barnsley win. 
I don't want to disrespect Stoke fans, but watching their defence on Monday gave me hope that we can get goals against them. A clean sheet would be massive and three points, but three points most importantly, the result's bigger than the performance. We need to win. Obviously, a great performance with a great result would be fantastic, And but this... Hopefully last Friday, the way that we came back from 2-0 down with 20 minutes left and got a draw against a good Bristol City side. They weren't firing all cylinders that night, but they're still 2-0 up. And to come back with 20 minutes left and to to, to win that... To, well, it, win, it felt like a win at the end. To draw that game like we did was a great achievement in the situation that we're in. So we need to win. 2-0 for me, Barnsley. Like I said, any result will do as long as it's three points. A point isn't enough for me. This this Saturday, it's too, you know, we need, we need to be getting wins now, especially against teams that are around us. We're at home, Stoke are bottom of the league. We've got a chance to be four points clear of them. If Middlesbrough, if results go our way, we've got a chance to go up another position going into that international period with some big games coming up after that going into the December, November time. So it's a big chance for us to get some points and get into double figures and get these lads some confidence. Hopefully there's a good turnout there on, on Saturday. Fingers crossed, um, and yeah, hope you enjoy the video, guys. Again, sorry to, sorry for the sound apologies. I'm at work, so there's not much I can do. With the nature of my work, it's uh, security cameras. So, right, guys, take it easy, guys. Hope you have a little rest of the week, and I'll probably see you Saturday after the game at Oakwell. Fingers crossed we can get the points. If the lads are watching, we believe in you. Come on, keep it going. We believe in you, lads. See you later. You Reds.